next up, we've got a, a really interesting um, presentation, a, a personal journey, actually. Um, whether it's the personal journey starts at birth or a bit later on, I'm not quite sure. But it's, it's the Swedish model. Um, and these guys are, are young Cannes Lions winners. Um, Joseph, there we go, Joseph Borenstein and Linnea, Linnea Rinas. My Swedish is not good. I'll try, yeah, yeah, maybe I should, yeah. should I give that another go? No, okay, we'll, we'll leave it. Um, and they're gonna be talking to us about their journey of how they, how they won that award um, and, uh, and what makes them so great. So guys, over to you. I was gonna be an engineer. I was going to be an engineer because that's what you become when you're, you're good at math, you got good grades in general, and you're from a city that's renowned for its university of technology. I was going to be an engineer, and I tried really, really hard at liking engineering. I went to all of these like inspirational days. I, um, I read through the course catalog over and over again, but I just couldn't bring myself to liking it. I think I could have made a pretty good engineer, sorry. Um, but to me, that would have been taking the easy way out. I needed something more, well, challenging. And I, I was gonna go into advertising. When I was a kid, I used to tell my parents that I would make way more creative and way more smarter ads than those we used to watch on TV together. But as I grew older, I started to get interested in politics, in how society works, in making a real change. And uh, you know what? All of a sudden, advertising, well, it didn't feel challenging enough. My name is Joseph Borenstein. I work with corporate PR and public affairs at Conewolf Sweden, specializing in the sectors IT, telecom, and law. And my name is Linnea Rinas. I'm a true marketing PR girl. And as a millennial, like we've spoken about before, I, um, I do believe that communication can change the world. And since I'm working with fast-moving consumer goods, I do believe that uh, consumption is a great tool for doing so. Um, they say opposites attract, and I guess that's really been the case with Joseph and I. Different backgrounds, different interests, different personalities. And even though we work at the same agency, it wasn't obvious that our professional paths would cross. But they did. And we're standing here today with several awards. And they asked us to come here to tell you about how we got our, our um, Can Young Lions, which is a story about coincidence, of luck, and of a whole lot of hard work. So, uh, in the spring of 2014, our CEO forwarded an email to us that encouraged agency leaders uh, to make sure that their junior staff applied to uh, Young Lions Sweden, the national qualifying round to Can Young Lions. We were four junior uh, colleagues at Conor Wolf who wanted to participate, but you could only be in teams of two. So what to do? Well, we let Chance decide by casting lots. And in retrospect, I'm really happy that Chance decided to put me and Linnea in the same team. Well, because it quickly became obvious that um, we do complement each other in a fantastic way. I am enthusiastic and impulsive. Joseph, he's calm and analytic. Usually, our work method consists of me splurting out crazy ideas and Joseph steering them in the right direction. When we eventually come up with something that both of us like, well, that's when we know we're onto something great. Um, two months after Chance decided to put us on the same team, um, we were dancing with joy as the, uh, the head of the Young Lions Sweden jury announced us the winners uh, in the PR category. We'd beaten numerous other teams and were bursting with pride that we were going to represent Sweden at the Cannes Young Lions. Um, we took that self-esteem with us to Cannes, um, confident that we had good chances of winning the whole competition. Well, that didn't exactly happen and we were a bit disappointed, but we decided then and there to not let that bring us down. And after not winning in Cannes, uh, we were considerably more humble when we got appoint, uh, appointed to represent Sweden at Eurobest Young Creatives in December that same year. 
especially since the Young Creatives uh, competition, unlike Young Lions, uh, is only one category. And you're asked to come up with an integrated campaign. Out of the 20-something competing teams, all but two came from ad agencies. And the other competitors, they kept asking us who else was the copywriter and who else was the ad art director. And as a result, uh, our campaign was definitely not mo the most uh, visually appealing one, to say the least. But the jury must have really liked it uh, because they crowned us the winners. And afterwards, one of the juries came up to us and she said that she didn't know that PR people could come up with ideas like that. And in the name of PR, we were really happy to have proven her wrong. So, this spring, we were really eager uh, to make it to Cannes yet again uh, to get our revenge. However, this year was a whole new situation for us. With our previous awards from, uh, from Young Lions Sweden and from Eurobest, uh, we were the clear favorites uh, to take home the, the victory again, and everyone expected us to win. It was really nice, of course, to be believed in, but uh, it created a whole lot of pressure. I mean, how are you supposed to, to handle all those happy shares when you don't even have an embryo of, a, of an idea, not even a crappy one. I think that's the only time we've ever been close to fighting. We'd spent night after night sitting in an empty office trying to come up with ideas, but we literally had nothing. The brief had sounded so fun and easy from the beginning, but we had nothing. Intense days of client work in combination with late nights of competing was taking its toll. We were exhausted. One night, we'd gone home to get some sleep, and I, I just couldn't fall asleep because my brain was spinning like crazy. And then, all of a sudden, there it was. The idea. I remember, you, I remember texting you at like 3.30 in the morning, um, just so I wouldn't forget but you don't forget the idea. Um, at that point, it was still a bit unrealistic and not 100% relevant for the brief, but, but with Joseph's analytic eyes, we finally had it. We didn't even think it was possible to win the Young Lion Sweden twice, but I'm sure glad it was. Just as a side story here, uh, our fellow Conor Wolfers, Axel and Amanda, they were also competing, but because of time shortage, uh, they didn't have time to complete their PR entry. So they decided, two hours before the deadline of the competition, to take the, their PR IDs and make them into a print ad. And that print ad took them to the final in the print category. And I really think that that shows the, the strength of a good PR insight. Um. The week leading up to Cannes Lions, before the competition had even started, was by far the most hectic yet in our careers. We were absolutely swamped in work, and we didn't even have time to think about the competition even for a second. The evening before going to Cannes, I burst out in tears out of stress. We've all been there, but it's hardly the best warm-up for, for an intense two days of competing. So. Uh... Unlike Can Lions, that I'm sure that you're all familiar with, uh, in Young Lions, you don't compete uh, with a completed, uh, a real completed campaign. Uh, instead, you get uh, a brief at site uh, from an NGO, and then you have two days to come up with a campaign. And this year, the brief came from Greenpeace, and they required a PR campaign that would uh, raise awareness of the environmental impact of the meat eating and motivate consumers to change their consumption habits. And Greenpeace, they wanted us to focus on the target group LOHAS, and that is those who live a lifestyle of health and sustainability. And during our briefing session, Linnea knocked on my shoulder and she whispered, I think I got an idea. And she snatched the notebook out of my hand and she started to write intensely. After the briefing session, we walked up and forth uh, along the, the boardwalk and discussed the idea. I mean, it felt right, but we couldn't help asking ourselves, wait, what are we doing? We can't go with the first idea that popped into our heads. Let's think of some other ones. But I guess that sometimes it's better to just go with your gut feeling. And so we did, and when we got back to our apartment that night, we had the whole campaign mapped out in our heads. The next day, we sat in a cramped and hot room together with all the other teams to work out our ideas. 
You see, in the Young Lions, um, you're not allowed to use your own equipment. Instead, we got one stationary computer per team. The other teams were freaking out about not having Photoshop, but since Joseph and our, I hardly aren't um, uh, art directors, um, we were just happy to, to have paint um, to use. Um, <laughs> but with four hours left to go, um, I was about to give up. My back was sore, my brain was hurting from all the thinking, and I literally stood up and tried to walk away, but somehow Joseph managed to convince me to stay and, and make the final adjustments. And I'm pretty glad, um, I'm pretty glad we did, because I think those final tweaks was what gave us the victory. Um, we thought we'd show you now what we showed the jury that day. Um, and please keep in mind, because it's gonna be a lot of information in a really short time, because we only had five minutes to present this. Um, so just try to bear with us. Um, so here is our Young Lions um, entry, the winning entry, um, in five minutes. So. Um, we got a, a, quite a long brief from Greenpeace asking us to do a bunch of different things with a bunch of different objectives, but we decided to narrow that down to a purely behavioral change. Um, make people eat less meat. And we saw a challenge in this, because while Greenpeace is great at raising environmental issues to public knowledge, they sometimes lack in presenting an alternative solution. And consequently, Greenpeace can occasionally be perceived as angry and militant activists, guilt-tripping the general public. And when it comes to changing a behavior, uh, such as lessening meat consumption, we really need a more problem-solving rhetoric. Um, oh, the target group. Well, the target group, the LOHAs, those who live a life sign of health and sustainability, they're well-educated and they do like to think of themselves as enlightened. Um, they are aware of most environmental issues, but they, they just don't believe that their individual actions can actually make a change. However, many have started to rethink their behaviors in other areas um, in order to ensure their own and their children's well-being. For example, drinking less alcohol, like limit, limiting their kids' sugar intake and so on. And these two insights um, tell that, uh, told us that we need to trigger both intellect and emotions in order to make them change their behavior and eat less meat. So, our strategy was therefore to manifest, both intellectually and emotionally, that lessening meat consumption is one of few actions to be made on an individual level that will actually make a great impact on the global environment, while we provide uh, inspiration to choose vegetarian alternatives over meats. Therefore, introducing <laughs> The Greenpeace Vegetable Zoo. <laughs> it's a city-centered pop-up zoo that houses the most common livestock built entirely out of vegetables. And I'm not sure if it shows that we didn't make this in Photoshop, but in paint. No, but this is made in paint. Um, so from, from birth to burger, uh, a cow is the cause of over uh, 10 times more CO2 emission than the same weight of vegetables. And to manifest this, uh, the zoo will display animal-shaped vegetable sculptures, scaled to show how much vegetables you get for the same CO2 emission as one animal. So for example, the cow will be 10 times bigger than a real cow. And in connection to the zoo, uh, food trucks will be serving simple and delicious vegetarian food, and the re recipes of all the food in the food truck will be written on the napkins, and people will be encouraged to bring the napkins with them home for inspiration. And we will, of course, invite, invite the, the Greenpeace importers uh, to, to, to work as park guides, to, to give tours, and to answer questions from the public. So, how do we spread the word about this? Oh, this was your slide. How do we spread the word about this? Well, um, Greenpeace opening it up the Sioux is kind of um, quite an event. So, uh, we will, of course, invite media and press um, and different influencers to, to a press opening. Um, more than that, we will, in, in order to create social media buzz, I mean, these kind of work like, like real life infographics, if you like. And by placing them next to the real animal, it's gonna make quite a good, um, quite some good content to share in social media and their own channels. Um, since the, the, the target group is very active on social media, I mean, spreading pictures of their kids and their breakfasts and so on, um, Taking their kids to the zoo is definitely going to um, create some good photo opportunities. Um, 
yeah, and, and through the Greenpeace newsletter, we can engage, like Joseph said, engage the existing supporters to be a part of this. And in the best of worlds, uh, we'd like to see this vegetable zoo campaign uh, being carried out simultaneously in uh, cities around the, the Western countries, uh, really putting meat consumption on the public agenda. However, uh, if we would have uh, budget limitations, uh, we think that this is so communicated in itself that it can be limited to one uh, place. Further on, the, the process of, of building this vegetable zoo, uh, we think that it really has um, the potential of becoming a great case video that can go viral, uh, involving and interviewing the farmers who provided the vegetables, uh, Greenpeace supporters who build the sculptures, visitors at the zoo, etc. And finally, we think that this target group can be extended to politicians, to school leaders, etc., to really amplify the message of the campaign. So why is this going to work? Well, this campaign manifests the advantages of choosing vegetables over meat in both an intellectual and an emotional way. First of all, the sculptures symbolically shows how eating less meat is an individual act that can actually um, have a great effect on the environment, like real life infographics. Um, Secondly, by manifesting this in a zoo setting, which is closely connected to children, um, creates a strong emotional incentive to change one's behavior uh, here and now for future generations. The campaign is solution-driven. Uh, since it presents uh, a, a vegetarian meal options, for example, um, and as such, it triggers both a change in behavior and a change in the perception that Greenpeace is solely militant and agri-activists. Um, and as a bonus, like Joseph said, it can easily, 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 sorry, uh, be extended to different target groups. Um, for example, for example, it can um, parents can educate their children about um, what their food does to the environment. So this was the campaign that got us here. Here. To the stage in Cannes in front of thousands of people accepting our Young Lion medals. It's been quite a journey to, to, to get there. Um, and we have learned so much along the way about ourselves, about PR, and, and, and most importantly, about never ever giving up. So, we chose to name this presentation the Swedish model, how to turn rookies into can winners. And we know that there are some, some really big shoes to fill, uh, but there is really something to it. I don't know if you noticed it, but during this whole presentation, we only mention our CEO once. And it's not because she, she hasn't been present. I mean, she paid for us coming here and for our hotel. But it's because she always trusted us to do things our own way. She has never been afraid of letting us try. She's never been afraid of letting us fail. And most importantly, she's never been afraid of letting us succeed, both in Cannes and in our everyday work at Kona Wolf. And I know that in many markets, the PR business is very focused on titles, and it takes many years for a new junior consultant uh, to, to meet the client, not to mention taking on initiatives like pitching a new client or managing a big account. So we decided to write down a few tips from us to you uh, that we, well, a few Swedish-inspired tips, if you like. And since we are both millennials, and we've been talking a lot about millennials these two days, um, maybe there are some takeaways that you could take home that your younger team members will like. First of all, throw away the titles. Well, we would never have won our awards if we would have been stuck in the blogger email, journalist calling, social media copy trap for two years. Um, which is easy if you're bound by titles and official work descriptions. In Sweden, we dropped a lot of the, the, the official hierarchies in the 70s, and we sure don't miss them. Um, what junior consultants may lack in experience, they make up for in curiosity. And our advice is to not only let them be part of the creative processes, but sometimes um, also lead them. Number two, mix and match. A wannabe engineer with a political junkie, a fashionista with a sports geek, and expected combinations of people can be pretty fun. Dare to trust. Well, um, our boss sometimes says that the least she can do is to not stand in our way. Well, that's a little bit drastic, but there is something to it. 
I think it's very important to trust and believe in your younger team members. They want to do things differently than you, try a whole new way of doing PR, let them try. I mean, they might fail to, from time to time. I failed so many times, but that's how we learn and grow, both as individuals and as businesses. And that is how you get to keep your talent past the three year I quit. Fun, fun is key. Um, it's been proved that millennials, they want a fun, uh, fun and social workplace. Um, and that does not mean that we're slackers. Because one of the reasons I work at Kona Wolf is because I work with the goofiest, funnest, and sweetest people. And sometimes our office space feels more like a schoolyard than an office. But does that mean that we win less new clients, that we score less coverage? No, not really. It just means we have fun along the way. So this is the, really the reason that we're here today. So it's not only about telling you the story of how we won our can lion. It's really the story to, to uh, encourage you uh, to nurture and take care of the talent you have. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that every single agency that you represent here today has the potential of winning a young PR lion. And next year, me and Linnea, we're going to be old too old to compete in, in can lions, in young lions. But don't worry, we'll be standing on the line uh, and we'll be sharing for the next generation of Conan Wolfers to get their chance to shine. And we're looking forward not only to see you there, but also to see your young PR talent there. So that's all for us. Thank you very you much. Can. See you in Ken. Sure. Okay, that was great. Um, any questions for these guys? I'm sure there must be. I have lots, but go on, David, after you. Well, first of all, thanks. That was, uh, that was awesome. And anybody who's worried about the future of our industry just needs to spend 30 seconds uh, with you guys. And you actually answered the question I was thinking about with your, your tips, but I would ask you maybe to put it in, in a tweet length response, what would you tell agency bosses who are wondering about whether they should send their teams to compete either in the national competitions or at, or at CAN? Um, go ahead. I don't know. Like, it's difficult. I, I don't know what else to say. Just like let them do it. Let them fail. Let them do um, whatever they want to. Because if, if, if your younger team members show interest in whatever, let them try, even if it means like getting a few less billable hours, um, whatever, because that's like that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it worth uh, doing. Um, so just let them do it. And I also think, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm hurting someone's feeling here now, but I think that me and Linnea, we're the only ones under 30 here. So if you want to see your young PR, sorry, Binta. So <laughs> Together with Binta, we're the only one under 30 here. So if you want to see your PR talent standing on the stage, uh, you know, uh, looking out on the most prominent leaders in, in the PR world, uh, you should really let them try. Yeah. Any more questions for these guys? I have a couple. How, how many uh, headhunter calls you get a day? <laughs> <laughs> that was a total nah. you don't, no, you don't no, we, got, we got a really good agency. Conan Wolf is pretty awesome, okay. so. Just being filmed, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Hi, Martha. How are you? Hey, CEO? office. A slightly more serious one. It seemed to me that when you were undergoing or well, going through that process at, at, at Cannes, I bet you learned a lot, right, as you're doing it. It just seemed there must be some lessons from that process that we could put into sort of PR academies to, to be a, 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 a training point or a training module for, for, for lots of different agencies that I'm just surprised. I don't know, maybe it does happen already, but um, presumably you learned... You were much better at your job after it than before it? I don't know. I think that what the, the one thing that we learned that has been really, really, really useful is finding that big idea. Because sometimes in our everyday work, we got clients who ruin things. You know, like they're scared of doing stuff and like there is, there is just, you know, they're scared of like presenting it to their, their colleagues or their bosses or whatnot. Um, well, we don't have to deal with that here because Greenpeace or the organization uh, as such isn't in the jury. So we can like come up with anything that is actually going to do the job, do the trick, like th the big idea that we believe in, which is probably something that you need to practice when you might not always 
be able to do that with your clients. You're not, you're not bound by reality in that sense. Exactly, can, yeah, which is really nice sometimes, yeah. okay. just like a, a, an exercise. But also, right. I think that panic is a big driver when you're competing. Mm, and anxiety. Uh, so you're, what is the driver? Panic. Right. You're, you're <laughs> you know, rushing towards the deadline, and you feel the panic <laughs> coming. Mm. And for me, Alinea, at least, that's when the best ideas pop into our head. So uh, my, our CEO is probably watching this, so we don't want to say too much. But if you can, like, um, make that feeling uh, <laughs> set in, in an in a, in a agency, um, yeah. Maybe we'll see the same kind of results. Panic is the key. But yeah, guys, I think on so. that note, guys, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.